So the real estate market is just a sorry state of affairs. And in the upcoming video, I'm going to put a microscope on two specific things that are really going to shock you. Stay tuned. What's going on my YouTube friends? This is Jerry Abbott, your number one real estate resource here in beautiful Las Vegas. Hey guys, a couple of real quick things before we dive into the video. If this is your first time to the channel and you wanna learn the cold hard facts about the US economy, the US real estate market, and specifically the Las Vegas real estate market, then definitely subscribe to the channel down below. Number two, if you happen to like the content in today's video, make sure to press that thumbs up like button, guys. That would really help the channel out. And number three, if you are thinking about relocating to beautiful Las Vegas, whether it's next month or next year, I've got your back. I'm a local real estate agent here. I've lived here for nearly 20 years. I know every inch of this city. When that time is right for you, definitely reach out to me. Just call, text, or email me anytime, and I'll help you find that perfect dream home. Let's dive into the video. So we all know that the real estate market is completely out of control and mostly unaffordable for the majority of people. I wanna show you two eye-opening video clips coming up. This first one is just over a minute long. Let's take a look at that right now. In January of 2019, the median sales price in the US was only $313,000. At that time, the average 30-year interest rate was about 4%. That's a monthly payment of about $1,500. Now let's take a look at those same numbers today. The median sales price is now $436,000 and interest rates are 7% for the national average 30-year mortgage. That's a monthly payment of $2,900. That's a 93.4% increase or in other words, almost double. But did incomes double in that same time frame? And that's a rhetorical question because no, of course they didn't. In fact, hourly wages went up from $27 an hour to $33 an hour, which is only about a 21% increase. Now here's what's crazy. In order to afford a $2,900 monthly payment, banks require that that amount of money should be no more than between 33 to 36% of your gross monthly income. Meaning you have to make at least triple that before a bank will even consider giving you a loan on it. So that means $8,700 a month or at least $104,000 per year, which of course the average person isn't making right now. Now that video is from a few months ago and many of those numbers are actually worse in other popular cities around the country. Take a look at this. All right, so this is pretty shocking. I want you guys to take a look at this webpage here that I brought up. Take a look at the headline right at the top where it says, how much a household needs to earn to afford the typical home in their local market as calculated by Zillow. Now the subheadline there assumes that you're putting down a 10% down payment. But here's what I want you guys to take a look at. On the left side right here, you can see the list of the cities starting at the most expensive where you see San Jose, California right there at the top and then a full list all the way down. But take a look right here in the middle of the page where you see the blue font. The blue indicates 2020. So this is basically before the pandemic time period. And then the orange font that you can see over here on the right side says 2024. So take a look over here on the left side. Let's start with this first one right here, San Jose, California. So let's go across the page right here in the middle, right where I'm moving that small arrow, right there in that blue font in 2020 in San Jose, California, right at the top there, you needed to earn $263,000 to afford the typical home price there four years ago. Now, if we go across over to the right in the orange font, right now to the current date, 2024, Look at the income that you need. You now need $454,000 in income just to afford the average home price in San Jose, California. All right, so let's go over here on the left side here. I wanna just show you a few more cities here. San Francisco is number two, Los Angeles, California is number three, and San Diego, California is number four. So California is absolutely the most expensive state to live in. If we go down just a little bit more, we see Seattle, Washington, New York, and Boston. These top seven cities, if we go over here to the middle of the page and look at the orange text, right there in the middle. Number seven, Boston is 205, we go above it. New York is 213, Seattle is 213, San Diego is 273, Los Angeles is 280, and San Francisco is about 340. These top seven cities alone, you need to be averaging over $200,000 a year in income just to afford the average price point, which is absolutely stunning. Now let's take a look at a couple of more cities here. Take a look over here near the bottom left where it says Miami, Florida. Back in 2020, right there in the blue text where I'm moving the arrow, $76,000 was the income that you needed back in 2020 to afford the average home price. Now take a look at it right there in the orange. In 2024, you need to make 151. If we look down here at the very bottom left here, Phoenix, Arizona, back in 2020, you needed to make about 66,000. Now you see in the orange right there, right next to it, 
you need to make about 131. So this is basically between all of these top cities, about 50 to 100% more income is needed to afford a home just four years later from before the pandemic in 2020 to now in 2024. This is absolutely stunning. This is exactly why there's such a lack of affordability in the housing market because home prices have gone up so much faster than people's income. And if all of that isn't bad enough, take a look at what a lot of the large Wall Street investment companies are doing to the residential real estate market. What's outrageous is your tax dollars are helping Wall Street buy up single family homes. You're subsidizing Wall Street. Massive private equity firms like Blackstone and Pradium Partners have backed a relatively new breed of homeowner, the corporation. This growing industry buys or builds single-family homes and then rents them out. Invitation Homes owns more than 80,000 rental houses. American Homes for Rent, close to 60,000. Some of the all-stars of finance, Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan, Blackstone, have put hundreds of millions of dollars into these companies. Now, one of the big reasons as to why real estate prices are so high is because inventory is so low. We currently right now have a shortfall of about two to three million homes in the United States. So let's break that down. We currently have about 140 million homes in the United States right now. Wall Street investment firms own approximately 2% of that. So let's call that about three million homes. Those 3 million homes right there is essentially the entire shortfall of inventory that is now in Wall Street's hands. So this just never existed a few years ago where Wall Street and these large investment companies own this many residential homes. It's a huge reason as to why home prices are so high because these available homes that would have been available to the public no longer are because of corporate greed. Now here in Las Vegas, where I happen to be located, home prices here are still very high. And I'm gonna show you some absurd examples of that in the upcoming segments. All right, so I'm on the popular real estate website, Zillow, and I wanna show you this first example of a home for sale here in the Las Vegas area. I usually start in the luxury category, which I'm gonna do again today, and then I'll work down closer to the average price point. I just wanna show you guys a few examples here of homes for sale in the Las Vegas area, which happens to be one of the most popular, if not most popular cities that people are moving to virtually every month. So let's start with this luxury example. You can see on the left side of this page, this home is $1.7 million. But if we take a look up here in the top left, you can see right up there, it says pending. So this home just went under contract and it says $1.7 million. This is a five bedroom, five bath, 3000 square foot home. But I wanna show you guys the price history from just a little while back and show you how extreme things have happened with this particular home here in the Las Vegas area. All right, so let's look at the price history of this particular home that's for sale here in the Las Vegas area. Take a look down here in the bottom left where it says 621, 2019. There was a price change here, but this is right around the time when they had listed the home. You can see over here on the right side of the blue highlight for $939,000. So that's a little bit less than five years ago. They removed the listing that you can see just above it. It says listing removed, and then they just took it off the market for a few years. And then if you look right here, right where I'm moving the arrow down in the bottom left, 9-15-2023. So that's a little less than five years ago now. Look what the home is listed for sale. 1.99 million, so essentially $2 million. So this home basically went from a little less than a million dollars to $2 million in less than five years. So this is when you know that the real estate market makes absolutely no sense. Just to give you guys a frame of reference, for a home to typically double in value, that used to take about 15 or 20, maybe even 30 years to happen. For that to potentially happen now in less than five years, just goes to show you how out of whack the entire real estate market is. But on this particular home, let's take a look down here again in the bottom where you see that blue highlight at $2 million. The sellers tried listing it at $2 million six months ago. And if we scroll up here just a little bit, you can see they reduce it to 1918. And again, it's pending right now at 1.7. Now, again, that was six months ago. They listed it at 2 million and they've dropped it 15% to get the sale. Now the sale could close lower than the 1.7, but again, it just goes to show you a home that was about a million dollars and now it's closing maybe around that 1.6, 1.7 million mark still is completely crazy in my opinion. But again, this is the reality of the real estate market, especially in the luxury category. Prices have gone up like crazy and buyers foolishly continue to buy into this market 
which keeps propping up not just the luxury market, but as you're about to see in the next segment, even average home prices should never be at these prices. All right, so before we drop down closer to the average median home price here in the Las Vegas area, which currently stands at about $460,000, I wanted to show you this example that just popped up. I had to show it to you guys because I saw it come up the other day on Zillow. Take a look at the price. You can see on the left side of the screen, this home is currently listed at $1.2 million. It's just a two bedroom, three bath, 2200 square foot home but again i want to show you the price history because this is more of an extreme price example than the first one i just showed you let's take a look at that right now so let's look at the extreme price history of this particular home take a look down here in the bottom left where i highlighted this in blue down on the bottom left that date says 6 1 2020 this home sold for six hundred and forty one thousand dollars now if we go just above it right above there you see the date it says 3 19 2024 so this is literally less than a couple of weeks ago when they listed this home. Take a look over here on the right side. $1.2 million is the current list price. That's almost a 100% price increase in less than four years. This is what I'm talking about, guys. This is a more extreme price increase than the previous example that I just showed you. Now, here's the reason why I'm showing you guys these examples. A lot of these sellers are trying to get, obviously, the maximum value. Just because the seller is listing the home at these extreme values does not mean this is what the home is valued at. That's why you need to get a real estate agent to run comps for you, to get a real appraisal on it, to see what the true value is. These examples, I know they're extreme, but there's a lot of sellers trying to do this where they're really not being realistic with the price points. And this home, in my opinion, realistically is not gonna sell anywhere near $1.2 million when it's all said and done. All right, so let's look at this third example of a home for sale here in the Las Vegas area. Now we're definitely coming down in price. You can see over on the left side of the screen, this home is currently listed at $650,000. It's a five bedroom, three bath, 3,000 square foot home. But again, I wanna show you the price chart history down below to show you the extreme price differences that have been happening with this particular home. All right, so focus your attention right here in the middle of the screen, right where I'm moving that small arrow. The box just to the right of the arrow, that small box is July, 2022. That's about 21 months ago. That was the peak levels of the real estate market. If we go over to the left side right here, that small number right there where I'm moving the arrow says $612,000. So let's rewind the clock a little bit. 21 months ago, the peak level of the real estate market, this home was valued at a max level of $612,000. Now what I wanna do is I wanna show you on the right side of the chart here, how different the price has become in just the last couple of months since this home was listed. All right, so again, focus your attention just to the right of this little arrow here. That small box says October of 2023. So that's almost six months ago. If we again go over here to the left side, this home was valued at 555. So there's been a fluctuation since the peak of the real estate market. It went up to 612, then it dropped down as low as 530, it was about 550 in October. Then take a look over here. So look over here next to that small arrow. The home was listed for sale. You can see that small box for $670,000 on 11-14-2023. So let's rewind the clock again a little bit. In October, the month before, the home was valued at about 550. The sellers decided to list the home for 670. If we go over here to the left side, it says right here, estimated value at that time, Zillow automatically estimated the value at 670 just because the sellers decided to list it at 670. But now take a look up here underneath the estimated market value, they've dropped it down to 627. So again, guys, let's just unpack this a little bit. The home was valued in October at 550. The sellers decided to list it for well above that at 670. Zillow's algorithm followed it to that 670 estimated market value. And now they're coming back to reality and realizing it's not worth 670. Zillow now has it down to 627. But again, just because a home is listed by a seller at their price point does not mean that's the true value. All right, so let's look at this fourth and final example of a home for sale here in the Las Vegas area. You can see on the left side of the screen, this home is currently listed at $519,000. It's just a two bedroom, two bath, just over 1,100 square foot home. But again, I wanna show you down below some radical price changes on this particular home. Let's look at that right now. All right, so let's look at the extreme price history of this particular home. Take a look at the blue highlight down here in the bottom and take a look at the bottom left. That date in the bottom left says 3-3-2022. So that was two years ago, right near the peak values of the real estate market. If we look on the right side, it says that this home was sold for $349,000. But if we go just above it right here on the left, 11 13 2023 so that's a little bit over 18 months later this home was listed for sale 
for $559,000. So they were not able to find a buyer at that $559 price point. So if we look a little bit higher, they reduced it to $535. And then right at the top here, they have it currently listed at $519. So that's a $40,000 price drop and they still don't have a buyer. But again, I want you to take a look up here in the chart history because this is the most important thing to show you the extreme price differential and where the home's true valuation is now. All right, so focus your attention one more time in the middle of the screen, just to the right of that little arrow. That small box says November 2023. So that's just a few months ago. If we go over here to the left side where it says estimate history, Zillow had this home estimated at $364,000. So again, just to the right of this small arrow, that little box says listed for $535,000 on 126 2024. So the sellers decided to list this home right at the beginning of the year for $535,000. If we go over here to the left side, Zillow actually had this estimated at $557,000. There's no way any home at this price point goes up that much in such a short period of time even if the home was renovated. But if we take a look now, and we take a little bit higher look up here where it says estimated market value, you can see that this estimate has now come down to $503,000. So do you guys see the common denominator here? Regardless if the seller is selling a luxury home or they're selling closer to an average price point home, what they're trying to do is obviously they're trying to make as much money as possible, which is only natural. So they're listing it at these very high valuation points. And Zillow, unfortunately, is a lot of times following those price points with their algorithm. And then eventually, after a couple of months goes by, when these homes don't sell, they realize that they're too high on their price and everything starts to come down. A lot of homes are doing this regardless of its luxury or regardless of an average price point. So again, if you're patient and you wait things out through these kind of extreme cycles, especially as we go through the rest of this year, I anticipate more price reductions happening like this from these original high price points. So the bottom line is this, guys. We all know that people's incomes are not keeping pace with the inflationary period that we're going through over the last few years, especially when it comes to home prices. My advice, especially when it comes to buying real estate right now, is to sit tight and not do anything if you don't have to. Don't go out and make someone else rich just because they're listing their home for sale at some extreme price. Sit tight, wait things out. I definitely think home prices are going to come down when we get later into this year and well into 2025. So before we end today's video, I just want to give a shout out to my favorite comment from last week's video. Now, I actually have two this week that I think are really pretty shocking. I'm going to put both of them up here on full screen and then come back on the other side and comment on them. So this first one is from David. He said, replaced a tire at Costco for $173 yesterday. That same tire cost me $83 two years ago. And this second example is from Player. Man, one just listed on my street here in Las Vegas for $620,000. Comps in the neighborhood are at best $480,000, which is still excessively overpriced. So those are just two of many examples that perfectly illustrate and are emblematic of all of the things that are going wrong in this economy, especially when the government and the media tells us that inflation is at 3% or 5%. When you see that the true inflationary numbers across many sectors of this economy are 50% or 100% or more. So I definitely want to hear from you guys. Drop me a comment down below. I read and respond to all of my comments. I want you guys to pick out a specific example of something that's completely overinflated in your life, whether it's your rent, your car prices, your insurance, groceries. Definitely let me know what is the most extreme overinflated example in your life. And my favorite comment from this week's video, I'm going to give a direct on-screen shout out to in next week's video. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I also hope you appreciate my transparency. You know, on this channel, I'm always going to keep it 100% real regarding the economy and the real estate market. So here's my take, guys, on the rest of 2024. This is an election year, and I think the Fed is going to do everything in its power to keep the economy, the stock market, and the real estate market propped up through the rest of this year. But when we get closer to 2025, that's when I think everything is going to hit rough water. It doesn't mean it's going to happen right when we started 2025. It's going to take time to play out. But I think interest rates are going to remain elevated. I think unemployment is going to go higher. And I definitely think more housing inventory is going to be coming on the market. So if you have time on your side and you can wait things out, particularly buying a high ticket item like a home, I would definitely wait things out if you have that ability. If not, and your circumstances are different and you're thinking about buying a home, especially here in the Las Vegas area, I've got your back. I'm a local real estate agent here. I've lived here for nearly 20 years. I know every inch of the city. When that time is right for you, definitely reach out to me. Just call, text, or email me anytime, and I'll help you find that perfect dream home. I'll see you guys in the next video.